kind of booster 101, what's the idea, what's the purpose, that whole thing. So the idea of a booster is I have supply cylinders that are anywhere from 2400 all the way down to 300 PSI of O2, argon, helium, and I'm trying to fill my smaller cylinder uh, up above what those are actually filled to. So this booster is going to take air as a drive gas and take our lower pressure of, let's in this scenario say oxygen, and then get it up above what that cylinder is at. So um, kind of walking you through the basics on this particular booster, this is the GB40. So we have our drive gas being plumbed into the side here. And in this example, I have it set up with our mobile setup, which is uh, just using a traditional regulator with the IP adjusted all the way down to 110 PSI. And then we've got an OPV on the side of it, just in case the first stage were to fail, it'll bleed out the OPV uh, rather than uh, damage the booster or, or a hose, since we don't have a second stage on there. And then I've got a quick disconnect hose up to a pressure gauge, uh, intermediate pressure gauge, just so I can see what the IP's at, that we're not exceeding what the USUN boosters are permitted for. Then, looking at the booster on this side, we've got the in. So the in, I have leading up to this valve and then to this manifold. So whether I'm running O2, helium, argon, or even air, I can push that through the booster and then it comes out into this block, which has a pressure gauge, and then it's going into my two cylinders. So coming in, the gas of choice, whether it be O2, helium, argon, or air, and then out into the pressure gauge, and then into my cylinder. So pretty simple setup. You can um, go very high tech with this. You can go very low tech with it. Uh, some of the things that I wanted with our setup, you know, on our uh, supply side was I wanted the ability of using different banks. So I've got a, a low O2 bottle here, and then I've got a high O2 bottle. So just grabbing our CGA fitting with a quick disconnect, and then I can switch that over from high to low. Um, Another thing I, I wanted was the ability of scavenging trimix out of a uh, you know a spent bottle. Uh, so let's say you know I got a set of doubles. I went ahead and threw a DIN adapter on uh, one of our whips, so I can take that set of doubles and then boost it into another uh, cylinder, so I'm not wasting it. Um, and that's been working out pretty well. So let's just take you through kind of the whole setup here. So if I'm gonna fill a cylinder, I first wanna see what we're at. So I'm just confirming everything is closed on my manifold system here. It's nice to just start closed. Pressure gauge is on. And then I'm gonna go to my cylinder. Got my bleeder, that's closed. Now we'll go ahead and pressurize. And open. Okay, so this cylinder of O2 is at 13.25, getting some change. Um, so this cylinder uh, of O2 is at 2,500 PSI. So if I were to pressurize, I'm gonna confirm that here. I wouldn't even need the booster at this point because I can just fill, partial pressure fill, until I get this up to 2,500. Um, so uh, for the example of this video, I do want to use the booster, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the cylinder. Bleed the line. I'm going to hook us up to our low O2 bottle. Opening nice and slow, of course. Okay. So this bottle of O2 is sitting right at about 750, 800, something like that. And my aluminum 40 is at 1300. So there is no way of this increasing over that without the use of the booster. So 
the gases up to this point. I'm now going to let it go through the booster nice and slow. Open the valve up. Okay, and now I'm going to actuate the booster by opening up a bottle of air. Now if you had a compressor or stored gas, you can do this as well using that. So you can hear the booster actuating. You can see our pressure over here. It's sitting at about 50 PSI. You can tell it's going nice and slow. Looking at our pressure increasing. And then when I've hit my desired pressure, I go ahead and just turn off the cylinder. Turn off the cylinder I'm filling. Bleed the gas. Now this can be removed. And I still have some residual gas in the lines. So our process here for that is shut off the supply. Open up. It's our, like our little isolator here. And then I'm going to bleed out all the gas. And then it's ready for... Uh, Ready for storing up till we go to the next, uh, next fill. All right, guys, I am here to help you out with boosters, answer some of your very basic questions, uh, and hopefully help you make the right choice when you're choosing your booster uh, for your at-home setup or mobile setup. So we've already talked about a little bit about what boosters do. They're taking low-pressure gas and making it go high-pressure. So with the use online, you have uh, six different models single action, double action, and two stage of varying sizes. From I can travel it or have it travel in my backpack to or in a Pelican case to I'm going to have to mount this sucker on the wall just because it's so large. So first thing to consider, what's the size? You know, what's the size requirement? Uh, smaller boosters obviously aren't pushing out as much gas or as much volume as the larger boosters. Double action boosters are working twice as hard as our single action boosters. So you're giving, getting twice as much production from it. Our two stage boosters are working to scavenge as much gas as possible. So we're starting at a lower pressure. We're ending at a lower pressure. And we're kicking it up uh, to that same output. So I'm able to bring my supply tank down even more than what I can on the single and double action single action and double action. My output is going to be anywhere from 3,500 up to 4,800. So for scuba diving uh, application where I need low pressure fills, aluminum uh, cylinder fills, or, or high pressure steel fills, we're covered in the whole gamut. Think output. On our smaller XB30 and our XBD30, you really shouldn't try to fill a set of one high pressure 133s with this little booster. Uh, it's more meant for your rebreather cylinders. Maybe the occasional aluminum 40, but you're going to be sitting there for a while. Our GB series with the GB40 and the GBD40, this is rated where, hey, you can do aluminum 40s, you can do 80s, 72s, uh, and you can even do sets of doubles. Just going to be there a little while on the doubles unless we get into the GBD40. Uh, and then finally, we have our two-stage series, which is the GBT and SBT 1540. And this two-stage booster is going to need the supply gas, so our O2, regulated down to five to 600 PSI before it gets into the booster. Whereas on the single-stage and double-stage uh, boosters don't need to be regulated down. So we're bringing it down to that 5, 600 PSI. It's then going into the booster, and the booster is now working even harder to get it up and out uh, at the high pressure. So I'm going to use more gas, but I'm able to scavenge my supply cylinder, so that O2, helium, so on, down to about 100 PSI. On the XB30 and the GB40, we're 
going to have to really stop boosting at about that 500 PSI point. So I'm leaving 500 PSI in my supply tank, and I'm either giving that back to the supply house, or I am transfilling an empty tank and trying to get as much gas out of there, or I'm going to um, continuous blend off a nitrox stick or you know a method like that through my compressor. So keep that in mind. If you are worried about getting as much gas as possible out of your boost or out of your supply tanks, go with that two-stage booster, the GBT or SBT. Uh, looking at the drive side. So if you're driving a small sport size booster like the XB30, you can get away with a smaller amount of drive gas volume. All of the units, by the way, uh, are, are maxing out at 116 PSI that they want to be driven on. Any more, and you're going to damage the drive side and have a leak. Any less, and you're just going really, really, really slow. So, obviously, we're doing O2 and other things. So slow is not a bad thing, but you also don't want to be sitting there for hours on end. So, maxing out at that 116. On the smaller XB30s, you can get away with a small pancake compressor uh, or some, you know, aluminum 80s uh, as, as drive gas. Going up to the GB40 and the GBD40s, you are going to want larger amount of uh, stored gas or compressed gas to run those uh, same as with the GBT and the SBT. So basically, you know, plan on having a big boy compressor uh, to, to run these units uh, if you're looking for speed. Once you've determined the size requirements, you've determined the size of the, you know, the size requirements. Okay, hold on. Once you've determined the size requirement that hey, I'm gonna, I have room for this either in my vehicle uh, or, or at my shop or, or what have you. Then you've determined what am I actually going to be filling with this booster, small cylinders, large cylinders, doubles. And then finally, am I worried about scavenging gas or am I okay leaving some gas behind, but I, but I want speed? <laughs> then you can make the decision of whether I want to do the XB30 the GB40, or then our, our two-stage line, the GBT and the SBT1540. So this is a very simplistic, rudimentary, hopefully just kind of open your eyes to what all the differences are, uh, and then we'll be able to help you further choose the right setup for you. Thanks so much.